Joe Scully's been the voice of drone racing since the beginning. Every major race, every podium would not be complete without Joe Scully crowning the winner. Take a listen for yourself. Two aces to chase. Heads up FPV and MCK FPV. It is now on Amari and Alex FPV to get a win. We'd love to see it. Pilots arm your quads. Live on the tilt in less than five. Heads up FPV and MCK FPV right together. And MCK leading uh, heads up FPV by two tenths of a second. A battle for the front with the two aces. There's Amari four seconds back from them and Alex FPV right behind them. Again, I know a bunch of people cheering on Alex FPV and Amari right now to get an ace to push us another round. Some say that you've not been to your first real drone race until Joe Scully's called your name, but how did it all start? Kind of a little bit of a roller coaster. My first job as a teenager was being a rodeo clown. Then from there, I wanted to go to school, something along that industry, so I got into uh, ro radio and uh, became like a radio DJ and then got too busy and then became a rodeo announcer for about 10 years. Then uh, at a rodeo, an RC car guy who's running a fifth scale track saw me, says, I gotta get this guy into RC car racing. So I became an actual race director and commentator. And then from there, I was on a viral video with a fifth scale car race. And Fat Shark actually saw me on a YouTube video and they reached out because they were hosting an event that was about an hour from my house. And they said, we got to get this guy for drone racing. And then from there, it has been a heck of a journey. My favorite event of the year to announce and commentate is a tough one. I really like International Open, of course, because there's just so many different formats. It's one like Woodstock-like party for an entire week. So that one's a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of new people that are starting out. And uh, it's kind of so mid-season and you see a lot of people you haven't seen in a while. So that's probably... One of my favorites, but also the multi-GP championship. My favorite is sport class since we started doing that in 2019. Seeing some of the pilots that used to be pro five years ago, and now, you know, they're still in the game, but they're just not like these robot kids, but they're still competitive. And uh, seeing a lot of people like starting and, and getting more competitive sport. The sport class championship, part of the multi-GP championship, but is really my favorite to be a part of, like in a commentator, race director role. The battles are a little easier to follow, I think, uh, for everyone when the, the pace is a little bit slower. It's a different competitor. They're more into it, uh, more passionate than veterans and even the newbies, uh, excited at their first champs or excited to still be at a champs. I just really love that atmosphere and being right in the heart of it with everybody. How long did it take you to figure out what's going on everything moves so much faster in drone racing the way that i follow a race it actually came from the rc cars and rc cars was really my introduction to racing my whole life has been rodeo bull riding i used to bull ride and roping so the rc cars the guy who got me into it he raced anything on two wheels moto gp and everything so he kind of taught me about racing and then so with the rc cars you get lost and especially when you're looking at eight scale, they all look the same. They're all green, black with a, a stripe. And so following a race, line of sight was extremely difficult. And I quickly learned I could pick someone up at the timing line, it would ping on the scoring system. But also my commentary, I try and do it hybrid. People watching line of sight, people watching FPV. And so I'll be following when people are crossing while I'm talking about someone else on the other track. But while I'm finishing up that thought, I'm following um, this other person so I can pick up and I already know where they am. So that's really a, a big tool. And then also I look at the entire track and I try and do some check marks, like four or six check marks. So I can instantly look at the screen and as soon as I see like the cube, I know where that is. And so I can quickly do a, a relation of uh, where everyone is on the track. Um, so it kind of came from RC cars and my first uh, drone races, I was calling line of sight which also was difficult because they were so small. Putting it all together, then you just kind of get used to it, just the way my brain is wired. Always looking for number two, always looking for the battles. As we continue to see a little bit of a separation there in the battle for the two, heads up FPV and Alex FPV. MCK RPV shuts it down, a pair of aces and another win. And uh, as soon as you see two, uh, visual stereo I call it or stereo optics as soon as you see that that's what you want to talk about because whether it's a battle for the lead or a battle for fourth fifth everyone wants to see someone pass someone at drone racing FPV and 
So that's kind of what I focus on. It really adds a lot. I always tell people, you haven't been to a race. So, Joe Scully called your <laughs> And man, that, that instant distraction. It's like, ah. Yeah. And there's always the curse of the announcer crash. Much harder than it looks. In Costa Rica, in the final, James was like, hey, sit down and get on the mic. I had raced on the course. I couldn't follow four people at once it was so difficult so. it's really hard well since pretty much the beginning i hosted our, our first race in 2015 the first drone race with timing we used rc car timing for it u.s drone nationals happened in sacramento and then we hosted the canadian drone championship and we had immersion rc on site we ran eight and so we've always been running eight when you got that dvr it's just a c a glitchy video <laughs> right try and make sense of it basically catching them on the timer and then your check boxes uh, but it is tough and I, I don't always get it right just make it sound good that's always like show business right <laughs> great day for a drone race I'm always glad to uh, be in Texas the home of rodeo and a great spot for drone racing as well here in Dallas and I've announced a bunch of rodeos all over the state of Texas so and I love it every when well, I'm here for a drone race or a rodeo but I've been to like podunk places like Stephenville which is actually the cowboy capital of the world and Bath and Burke oh you know, just all kinds of places off the beaten path and uh, obviously Houston and Austin and all the big ones but I haven't uh, I haven't announced any of those but I've been all over the podunk places in Texas which is a big deal for a guy from Canada like <laughs> yeah that's right you're now, from Canada yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of weird right like I'm a rodeo announcer oh yeah where are you from Canada oh you you rodeo up there yeah well we have like top three rodeo in the world in Calgary which is nowhere near me but um, so yeah, it's a it's a great connection to come down in can in uh, from Canada to Texas. I love it down here. Subscribe for more drone content and leave your favorite Joe Scully story in the comments below. Where were you the first time he called your name? Did it make you crash or did it land you on the podium?